back to the mountains of North Carolina where Highland Falls, High Hampton, and Chattooga, all near Cashiers, are joining up with Sapphire Valley to host the Golf Croquet Nationals for 2022. Today, we're at the Sapphire Valley Resort Country Club and Croquet Club, where their two courts are hosting doubles. Court number one there above is hosting the doubles final today. This is all sponsored by the U.S. Croquet Association, as is this channel. Want to check out the USCA? Here's the contact information and the website. Everything you want to know about getting involved in this marvelous sport of ours. This is the doubles final. It's best two out of three. David and Kamalu put on a dominant tactical performance to win game one, seven to three. That's recapped here where you can see that the Maloose jumped out early and maintained a lead to win the first game. Game two was a Jim Teal highlight reel. He and Matthew eked out the win to keep the series alive. The scoreboard doesn't reflect the 80-foot clearance as Matthew was doing to set this up. And now what you've all been waiting for, Game 3 in the doubles final of the USCA Golf Croquet National Championships. Jim Teal, under tremendous pressure, made the game winner in Game 2 with black. So Kyle went first with yellow. All four balls are in. Black just shot at red there in hoop shooting position and missed. Red is almost hidden behind hoop one. Almost, I said. I don't know what Matthew's critical distance is. Reg Bamford has been known to hit the peg 63 out of 64 times from the sideline. I think Matthew's getting pretty close to that. And David Malouf is a master of this gentle approach to hoop shooting. Take a right on 64 and then pull it down. You know what the is? Their phone does? Of course, when you make hoops gently like that, your next shot looks like this. The shot didn't look like it started. How hammer did it? <laughs> Demonstrating that clearing center ball is a lot more important than hitting it hard. This next shot surprised me a little. I expected him to clear red, but his angle was so shallow that his landing zone for blue was probably two or three feet long. Well, 
And a little luck never hurts. Blue needs to be wired from yellow because red has to clear black. Assuming Matthew's going to make that hoop. In the U.S., they're sometimes called wickets, mostly so we can use the alliteration of wine and wickets on Thursday night. Hops and hoops doesn't seem to work very well. But the rest of the world plays cricket, and they don't want to confuse wicket with cricket. And yes, sticky wicket comes from cricket, not croquet. So far, so good. Red and yellow took advantage of going first. Got quiet. Blue and black got to hoop two first and took advantage of that. Fans are getting their money's worth. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Painful at times <laughs> for each team, but we're getting our money's worth. Well, David's last trap was painful in the last game. Yeah, that was. That will haunt him a bit. <laughs> but it won't haunt him too bad if they win this one. The Mullahs are both playing the bent chaff version of Don Oakley's Predator Mallet. He also makes one that can break down to travel, like the trimmers that Matthew and Jim are playing. Yeah, so maybe, maybe it's I'm not saying because the grandfather's eyes are not seen to be that. Yeah, 
to the to the bridge. I mean, it's tall. When everybody's shooting lights out like these guys are, it's misses like that that stand out tactically. Matthew is going way off to the east, I guess, so that he can't get cleared long by yellow on the next turn. You know, Matthew is such a good sport and such a promoter of the game that he may actually be cheering for Red to make this hoop. It's not that hard to yell at the block either. Black going to the west boundary penalty spot. He was way off size after his miss on yellow at hoop three. Didn't miss by much. I don't know if they always do what I would do, but I don't I wouldn't call it surprising. It's just like a different your center ball in his lower different way. You just hit yellow to red. You press it. No way. No way. No, I think that the jump shot is no higher plus than the top of the And the every other hoop sequence is broken. Red blood was here. If they're, they're, yep. But red, yep. No. The jump is not right. I don't think the jump is entirely the same. It was. It's not only with the jump do you have to gauge the power, but you also have to gauge the perfect line. You have to gauge the bounce point. I'm, it, for most people, I would actually say the jump is the right line of play. But I think Matthew's too damn accurate to not at least catch a piece of that red ball. There's this part. Mm -hmm. This is very ambitious. A 10 yard row K to try to promote Black into hoop shooting position at five. That's all right. I would put black right here. I, I'll, I'll say this. I, I'd put black over here. I wouldn't, no, I wouldn't even put it right there. I'd put it over here. I'll say this. I would play the jump shot, but I would feel like I would only be playing the jump shot because I'm not as confident in my accuracy. I feel like a guy like Matthew. The probability of him hitting up a little bit so he can be a little bit is way less than that. Think about the distance. Matthew was no more than 15 feet away from the yellow ball. Jump shot was red. Of course. Would you have said that if he hit it? I still, as he was lining up, I said I don't like it. Yeah. Okay, ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, here's the thing. I don't like it. It's not that I don't like it objectively, but I, I would have played the jump. I don't like it for Matthew. That would have been a marvelous moment. 
That's what I'm saying. Matthew being on shoot. I know, but if you're building this to do you are done that works. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All he had to do was hit a center ball and catch a piece of it. He's come up with the shots when they needed them on that second base. The Malus have done this a lot. He's putting black where it can handle red when it sets up, and yellow doesn't feel the need to clear it because it doesn't have a hoop shot. Perfect spot Yeah. But black should have been wired from red. Looks like black probably can't clear yellow. So Matthew either has to clear yellow or score the hoop. He elects to try an in off off of black. That's what he was going for. Uh, Oh, Keep going. Don't. Yeah, this dude's been back all day.
The Maloofs are playing such a steady game that a couple of missed shots and the wrong call on a tactical coin flip or two, and Jim and Matthew are in a hole. It looks from here as though yellow is stymied by the hoop. They're going to send black halfway because they assume either blue or red is going to make the hoop. Why they didn't just put black over by seven, let blue clear red and go on from there, I'm not sure. I may be wrong about how stymied yellow is. He should have rolled it. Like he was telling us on the practice line the first day. Mm -hmm. He was like, Tim, show me a few pull up shots. He's like, these work so much better on these angles. Yep. And he switched off. Yep. So.
Yep. Nice nice the YouTube croquet addicts among you, and if you're watching this, you probably qualify, will know that in 2013, Reg Bamford was down 6-2 to two in Game 5 in the World Championships in Cairo. He won then five hoops in a row to come back and win the World Championship with a line shot on hoop 13. It ain't over until it's over. And in case you lie awake at night wondering whether croquet is a game or a sport, my wife has solved your problem. It's a disease. Spin over power, yeah, that's the way. It's looking like near completion. Yes. <laughs> I don't think Matthew can see red. I think he's going to try to clear red by glancing off yellow. Superb shooting and exemplary tactical patience carried David and Kyle Maloof to the 2022 USCA Doubles National Championship. I'm going to predict this will not be their last. There's more coming from the Nationals. Subscribe, give us a like, hit the notification button so you'll know when there's more action from the mountains in North Carolina.